Welcome back to Bazaar Morning Call. Well, the market for today is indicating a big gap up opening adjusted to the close that we saw on Tuesday. But our entire team is joining in now to tell us about uh, all the stocks that are in the news this morning. So let's get straight to that. Mangalam joins in first up to talk about Dabar. Uh, it's spicing up uh, its journey with an acquisition of Badshah Masala, something that perhaps either we have used or our mothers have used uh, when, you know, when we were children. Uh, so very familiar there. But Mangalam, go ahead. Whether you use Bacha, Bacha Masala or not, you've definitely heard their, uh, you know, ad jingle. And that's uh, something that speaks about uh, the brand that, uh, uh, you know, Bacha is. So Dabar actually had a boringly in-line quarter, but it spiced it up, like you said, with the acquisition. They've also announced a 326 crore capex for toothpaste and juices business. But it was Bacha that really took, uh, you know, all the highlights away. As far as the numbers are concerned, 2986 crores on the top line, absolutely in line with expectations. 600 crores on the EBITDA. The street was working with 602 crores and 490 crores on the profit but the street was working with 490 crores itself 1% volume growth the street was working with 0 to 1% and now to the spicier bit they've acquired 51% stake in Bacha Masala for 587 crores valuing the company a little over a 1100 odd crores and the remaining 49% will be acquired over the next five years the deal is done at just shy of five times FY23 price to sales and about 20 times EV to EBITDA which means that Bacha's derived FY23 revenues is around 256 crores and margins at around 20 3%. Importantly, 82% of their sales come in from blended spices, which is basically, uh, you know, blended masalas, which are high gross margin products. And it's a 25,000 crore category that Dabur has entered into. So apart from the valuations, the important thing to watch out for is that it's a strong brand that they've acquired. How much can they scale it up using their own distribution platform? And what it does for them is something that is crucial to watch. Okay, all right. Mangalam, thanks for that. Well, hop across to Ekta. She's here to tell us about Gland Farmer's numbers. Ekta? Thanks for that. Well, yes, for Gland Pharma, you know, overall, uh, there was a Q&Q &Q recovery that the company reported, but it still missed expectations. So the revenue was down 3%. The street was anticipating a 9% de decline. The margins disappointed because that came in at 28.4%. The street was anticipating around 31, 32%. And the profit 241 crores versus estimates of around 250 odd crores. Now, the core markets, which is basically 75% of their business, was up 3% on a year-on-year -year basis. So it was better than the performance last quarter. And India continued to decline. It was down over 70% in the previous quarter. It was down 40% this quarter. The company did attribute it to reasons such as supply disruptions as well as a high COVID-19 base. Now, the street is not convinced. For example, Incred wrote on Glam Pharma last night, they reduced the FY23 to FY25 core earnings by 21 to 23%. They maintain a whole rating, but they've lowered their target price on the stock. What could probably support Glam Pharma is the net cash, which is still strong, 3,800 odd crores. The stock is already down 45% from its 52-week high trading at around 21 times FY24 estimated PE. Okay, stock is halved from its 52-week high. Thanks a lot, uh, Ekta, for that. Uh, but let's go across to Bahishta now. She's tracking Crompton this morning. Bahishta, over to you. Hi, thanks for that, Sonia. Crompton grief numbers have not been uh, very good. In fact, the numbers have been lower than the CNBC TV18 poll. The revenues came in at 1,700 uh, crores, while the EBITDA margins have lowered to 11.4% in this quarter versus 15.5% uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. The electric consumer durables division revenues were down 3%, which was anyways on the expected lines. Fans' business was impacted due to slow channel inventory. However, there has been some weakness in the lighting products division, whose revenues are down 7% in this quarter. Now, now, of this, the conventional lighting business declined by 35%, while B2C LED business was flat. The company has explicitly highlighted the, the high retail inflation is pinching the consumer's pockets and hence can expect uh, some selling pressure in the stock today. Point taken, Vaishta. You know, Dabur is saying their volume is just 0 to 1%, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Crompton is saying that inflation is pinching consumers. There is a common theme there. But uh, tell us about Z now. Uh, they're tackling the competition uh, uh, commission's uh, uh, point of view by selling off some channels? Yeah, that's right. Sony and Z have voluntarily agreed to sell three uh, Hindi channels, which includes Big Magic, Z Action and Z Classic. And this is to address the anti-competition concerns which are arising out of the merger deal. Now, at present, these channels do not contribute a lot to Z or, or uh, their revenues. So on the face of it, looks like Z and Sony have got the CCI merger not without having to lose much. So some positive news.
Okay, thanks a lot for that. Well, Ekta is back with us to talk about Glenmark Pharma and Lupin and why you should be watching out for those stocks. Ekta, over to you. Thanks for that. Well, yes, for Glenmark, it's in fact a disappointing piece of news and it's disappointing for the industry as well because their Badi facility has received an import alert from the US FDA. And that means that any kind of new approvals will not be allowed from this particular facility. Now, remember that this plant was already under the US FDA scanner because they already have a warning letter which was issued to them in 2019. After that, in June, they were issued six observations, which is just uh, June 2022. And in September 2022, the US FDA said that they continue to have an official action indicated status maintained on this particular facility, which means that the probability of an escalation is high. So the street was anticipating it, but an import alert is definitely disappointing. It's 1-2% to of their FI22 US sales, so the impact on revenue might not be as much in terms as much as it is in terms of sentiment. For Lupin, again, US FDA issues there. They, we have access to Form 43, which was issued to the biotech facility in Pune, and they've received 18 observations from the US FDA. They have spoken about aseptic processing, monitoring, lack of adequate product evaluation, remedial action on actionable microbial contamination. So these are issues which are going to take a longer period of time for Lupin to resolve. So expect the stock to probably be in the red on account of this. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, so uh, a, a bit of red for some of the pharma stocks. Sonal, you have a bunch of uh, other results that you're going to apprise us of? Yes, there are four of them. Uh, Lata, let me start with Chennai Petroleum. Well, GRMs have fallen substantially and that is something we can see in Chennai Petro's results as well. Uh, revenue decline of 16%, EBITDA down 93%. We have margins at 1.2% versus 14.7%, leading to a profit decline of 99%. GRMs for the company, they came in at $4.5 per barrel versus $25 per barrel on a sequential basis. Remember, Singapore GRMs had fallen sharply from the peak and that is something we are seeing here as well. On the flip side, IFL Finance, good set of numbers, lower cost is something uh, that aided earnings for the company this time around. NII was up 30% on a YY basis, interest income up 6% sequentially and interest expense was down on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. A net interest margins on book at 8.1%, that is in the first half, which compares with 6.7% on a YY basis. Uh, the fourth number that I'm watching out for is Century Textiles, reported good set of numbers with an EBITDA margin expansion of 400 basis points that is in a tough environment so expect that stock to do well in trade today we also have pcbl which reported good set of numbers uh, we saw pcbl uh, seeing a margin uh, decline though uh, of around 600 basis points and profits down by four percent so despite the revenue uh, upside that we are seeing this stock should see some red in trade today okay that's pc phillips carbon black limited pcbl uh, all right, uh, let, let's take a quick recap of all our top stocks and focus stocks with positive news flow. There's Darbar, Crompton, Z, Century Textiles and IFL Finance. While stocks with negative news flow, Glan Pharma, Glenmark Pharma, Lupin, Chennai Petro as well as PCBL. But let's take a quick uh, look at what's happening in the world of crude because oil prices have